There is so much confusion in this market today. I'll talk about that and then get into the latest home prices and insights for the City of Toronto for week ending October 4th, 2023. Hope everybody had an awesome Thanksgiving weekend. As you can tell from the sound of the, my voice, I got sick over the long weekend. So confusion. If you're a buyer just getting into the market right now and starting to look, you see a property that you like, it's going to confuse you that it may have an offer night scheduled, meaning the seller is expecting buyers to compete and is expecting more than what they've listed the house for. That's going to confuse you because in your mind as a buyer, you're thinking it's a declining market and every price I see, I should be offering less than whatever it's listed for. You may be right sometimes and sometimes you're going to be wrong because half the properties are selling at list price or more across the city of Toronto. If you're a seller and you go on the market and you want to have an offer night and you want buyers to compete, sometimes it's going to work out and sometimes nobody's going to show up for offers. During showings, you might get few showings coming to your house to have a look at your, your awesome property for sale and you're going to wonder what's going on. And you might get an offer and it's going to be really, really low and it's going to drive you nuts if you're a seller and you're going to be confused because you thought, man, I just, I have an offer night, lots of buyers show up, my house looks great, they're going to compete, but they're not. And then the ones that do put in an offer are going to be offering you below list price and that's going to confuse you. There is so much confusion. And then you're going to see a headline that says property selling over asking or there's a flood of listings and properties are sitting there and, and you're a buyer and you put in an offer and you think it's a good offer and the seller's attitude is, is no, I'm not going to sell it at that price. And you're thinking, but they need to sell. They're financially strapped, you're thinking as a buyer. And not every seller is financially strapped. And some just want to sell. They want to upgrade to a bigger house. And some are financially strapped. But the minute there's one or two people trying to compete for that house, price goes up. All sorts of confusion out there. And the best way to... <coughs> Excuse me. The best way to deal with this is you really got to look at your individual situation. If you're looking to buy that home, that property you're looking to buy, what's going on in that neighborhood? You may or may not put an offer, but then you go to another neighborhood. The same rules don't apply anymore. And depending on that home's pricing strategy, again, the same trying to buy it, that strategy, because there is a strategy in how you buy, when you put the offer in, type of closing date you use, the conditions, all that's part of the offer strategy. If you don't do that right and adapt it to each situation, you're, you're kind of just stabbing in the dark and you're going to be even more confused. You've got to really understand that each time it's a different situation. And if you're a seller, careful about the headlines because they talk about all of Canada and that's not going to help you. Even talking about all the GTA is not going to help you if you're a seller. Talking about all the city of Toronto is not going to help you if you're a seller. You really need to know what's working in your pocket, your neck of the woods. That's all that matters if you're looking to sell and what's your strategy for you. As always, who you hire matters and the right realtor can help you decide which strategy makes sense in your situation. If you feel this video can help somebody you know, please pass it along. If you get value from what we're talking about, subscribe. And if you want to speak with me about your real estate situation, selling, buying, it's really simple. Below this video in the description is a link to my calendar. Click on that, book a time that's convenient for you, and we'll talk about whatever's on your mind. Now, let's get into the numbers. Yeah. 
there are lots of two-family homes in the city of Toronto, but none as innovative and unique and as luxurious as the one we're showing at the end of this video, where two families can live above grade. Have a look. The video is at the end of this video. This is a confusing market right now. People are not sure really what's going on, and, and that's because the market is in a transition. Is it going to go down? Kind of looks like that, but then you get a few months of or a few weeks of prices going up and sales going up. It's very much it's in a transition. So it's not all of Toronto or not all the GTA is in a balanced market or not all the GTA is in a buyer's market, but the pockets, the neighborhoods are behaving differently and that's what's causing a ton of confusion. It's in a transition right now. Let's get into the numbers. Here's a quick summary. Average sold prices. We got condos down here, towns and semis, detached market here. And again, this is just for the city of Toronto. We're going to start off with detached properties. I've got here the data broken down by week for a whole year. For week ending October the 4th, 153 detached properties were sold. It's a little bit down from the previous week when we sold 163, but the week before that we're at 153. So it's kind of hovering in the 150s, 160s right now for three weeks in a row. The amount of property sold at $2 million or more is down from the previous week. It's sitting at 31. And average sold price is also down for, for a couple of weeks in a row now to 1657000 so I, I've just told you what I'm reading right here, right now in front of me. And as I get into some of the other data, some things are going to be a little bit confusing. Like I just said, looks like average prices now for the last two weeks in a row has been trending down, but we're going to get back to that in a second. Compared to last year, 1657 is 2% higher than where the average price was a year ago. Let's look at the median price. The median price took a big drop from the previous week to 1,263, and that's 1% 1 higher than where the median price was a year ago. But let's look at the dotted line. The dotted line is a four week moving average. So if we look at the average sold price, I just finished saying average sold price for a couple weeks now is coming down, and that's right here. One, two, it's been trending down. But the four week moving average, if I look at that, I'm going to be saying average prices trending up over the last four, five, six weeks, which is true. Well, they kind of both are, but you got to understand how the numbers work. The four week moving average takes blocks of four weeks and averages it out and charts it out. Well, in those four week blocks, you're going to have the high price here of 1785 a few times represented in here which brings up the average and these numbers here are higher than the one fives that we've had so it's going to be trending up even though you look at a small spotlight of just the last two weeks overall prices have been trending up over the last say four five or six weeks so it depends on what somebody wants to either hear or what they read or what somebody wants to say is going to determine which way prices are going. You judge for yourself. I'm just presenting the numbers to you the way they actually are. And these are from transactions actually done, sold, traded on the Toronto Real Estate Board. Sales, 153 we said were sold, 48% sold at list price or more. So it's about half and it's been about half now going back since the middle of August actually. I just circled those but we've been about half. It's pretty steady for a while now. Listings. Well, out right past Labor Day listings shot up but they've been trending down ever since we hit the high week of 528. <coughs> Excuse me. Active listings shot up and for the last three weeks, yes, they've been increasing, but not that much. We went from 1737 to 1752. So yes, 
They're going up, but not as aggressively as that one big shot that brought us up to, to the 1,700 properties. But compared to three months ago, there was 1,339. Now we're at 1,752, over 400 more detached properties available for sale. Months of inventory, 2.6. It's been hovering around that for a few weeks now. 2.6 is the months of inventory for all the city of Toronto. If we break Toronto down though into nine different sections and we say that 2.6 is all Toronto, you'll be surprised that some areas are super aggressive still. Scarborough sitting at 1.4. It's very aggressive, very much a, a seller's type of market. But you're gonna get pockets in Scarborough where properties are sitting and others are all being sold with an offer date, multiple offers, lots of lots of uh, um, offers coming in on offer night so 1.4 for scarborough very competitive east york riverdale beaches area 1.1 months of inventory high park parkdale 1.5 etobicoke 2.1 rexdale downsview 1.8 very aggressive still in some of these areas and then you look at you know york mills Ro rosedale average price now there was only 17 sold but average price for those 17 is 3.6 million and over a third are selling at list price or more. So then that's 3.6 million is the average price. Let's take a look at semis here. Average sold price has been trending down for four weeks straight now, sitting at 1,260,000. 52 semi-detached properties were sold. 15 of those were at 1.5 million or more. So it's interesting that average sold price continue to come down because the, the luxury semis at 1.5 million or more, or that's what I'm calling the luxury semis. We sold the previous week, we sold seven. We more than doubled to 15. You'd figure average sold price would shoot up because of more of the luxury semis being sold. But no, average sold price came down to 1,260. 1,260 is 1% 1 higher than where we were this time last year. And the median price is 2% higher than where we were this time last year for semi-detached. Months of inventory sitting at 1.8, 67% of the semi-detached properties sold at list price or more. So it's pretty competitive and you could see months of inventory at 1.8. Townhouses, these are freehold townhouses really tricky to track just because there's so few sales 14 were sold seven of those so half were at 1.5 million dollars or more average sold price shot up to 1393 almost 1.4 million compared to last year well it, it's it's nuts it's 24 percent higher than where the average sold price was a year ago the median price which is higher than the average sold price is 32 percent higher than where we were last year. If there's, if there's ever a time that you really gotta look at the individual neighborhood, for sure it's for townhouses because the overall average that I'm talking about here is not something you kinda wanna use as, you know, as the barometer because the sales are so few when it comes to freehold townhouses. Months of inventory sitting at 2.9 months of inventory. Here's condos. So sales, have been trending down. Now these are condo apartments, not condo townhouses. Sales have been trending down, but the last three, four weeks, yes, they've been coming down still, but not by that much. The previous week, we sold 167. Week ending October 4th, 165. So two condos less, so it's kind of the same thing, but overall trending down. 20 condo apartments were sold at $1 million or more. Average sold price, and this doesn't make sense, has been trending up. We're now at 763,000. Prices of condos are supposed to be coming down. And I, when I say supposed to, it only kind of makes sense when you see the amount of condos available for sale, the influx of new condo listings, you figure that price would be coming down, but it's not. So very confusing. Compared to last year, 763 is 2% higher than last year's average sold price. 
The median price of 685 is also 2% higher than where we were this time last year. Prices were trending down, now they're trending up. Okay, so this is sales. Of the 165 that sold, less than a third, 32% sold at list price or more. Now I've just got a few weeks circled here, but we can go way back to the beginning of August and it's, you know, low 30s, high 20s, low 30s selling at list price or more. So it's kind of like not that much competition when it comes to condos. Here are listings. Listings shot up outside of Labor Day, but they have been trending down. But there are almost 4,200 condos available for sale. Three months ago, 3,000, oh, let's say 3,100. Now there's 4,200. That's a lot, it's 1,100 extra condos available for sale. That should be bringing prices down. Look at months of inventory. It's, there's no question it's trending up. We're at, sitting at 5.9. Prices should be coming down. That's confusing. If you're a buyer, you're hearing this, you're looking at this, yeah, that makes sense. Prices should be coming down. You go to buy a condo, you're trying to offer lower, but somehow, some way, the condo's not selling lower than or where you expect it to sell. That's what's one of the isolated instances where it's making this market very confusing. Prices should be coming down, but they're not. At least not yet anyways. So here's a summary. Condos way up sitting in a buyer's market, but one of the characteristics of a buyer's market is that prices trend down. It's not happening with condos. Um, when it comes to detached, we're sitting at 2.6. You know, technically, if you wanna like just slice it where the number is, we're in a seller's market. In a lot of pockets we are. Overall, I would say though, we are sitting more in a balanced type of market. Some neighborhoods may be a buyer's market, but overall a balanced market when it comes to the freehold properties. Now check out this awesome two family home video right now. Welcome to 4027 Bloor Street West in Etobicoke. Before I show you the inside of this home, let me tell you what makes it so unique. It has in all eight bedrooms, eight bathrooms. It has nine foot and 10 foot ceilings. Each room has its own individual climate control. These are all luxury features you would expect from a custom built home. But what really stands out in this home is that it was designed from the very beginning for two families to live separate and independent of each other, both above grade. Let me start by showing you the principal residence. So this is the principal residence, including the finished basement. You have five bedrooms, five bathrooms, about 3,000 square feet. So here's the finished basement. It has 10 foot ceilings, an entertainment area, two bedrooms, two bathrooms, and a private walk up to the backyard. So this is the private self-contained luxurious secondary suite with three bedrooms, three bathrooms. Have a look.